What is good, y'all? It's the Boy Deluxe. And change up a couple of things. As you can tell, first and foremost, I got a tripod finally, right? So no more shaking videos. We kind of fix that thing up. You can kind of see it. It's not in the ring light. It's separate, but we're not gonna have that issue anymore. So I'm, I'm thankful because my shoulder is not gonna be tweaking out halfway through the video. Um, also, I, I wanted to go ahead and switch up the content this week a little bit. Um, I thought about doing a tutorial, but uh, for those of you who follow me on my Instagram, you know, I post some results of the students are in the Elevated Mentorship Program. Uh, and honestly, I've been getting a lot of DMs from a lot of you guys wondering, you know, how students that we have in the program are making, you know, $3,000 per week, uh, not per month, but per, per week. How are students making $1,000 per day and, and how are students charging $100? Um, and it's really about the system of operation. Right. And we totally switch up the idea of like, I think barbers, when I'm talking to barbers, at least just seeing how everybody's doing throughout this time, um, they all just want to, you know, I'm, I'm asking them, what is their plan of attack? The plan of attack is, well, I'm just going to better my services. I'm just going to go ahead and get better with my haircuts. I'm like, okay, cool. That sounds good. It sounds like the right thing to say, but what actually has that directly correlated with your business? And I think this is where the the separation factor of like this traditional way of barbering where barbers are just like, um, oh, just work on your service and work on your craft and it's gonna come. And reality is that shit's never gonna happen. A lot of times we see people just working on their craft for the rest of their career without any tangible results. Um, and really in Elevated Mentorship, we get tangible results for our students uh, very, very quickly. And honestly, we're getting really deadly accurate with this thing. It's almost to a scary result. So um, I had a lot of questions in terms of like, how are you doing this or how is this program? Like, what are you guys doing? Um, and even with that, uh, the kind of the demo we had last time, it, it was kind of like really outdated. So I decided to go ahead and do uh, something different. I hopped on the computer um, and kind of like did a whole slideshow of exactly what we like kind of the process and uh, what we put our students through really. Like the 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 process of operation in their business and what we really changed. Because a lot of barbers are like, well, what do you do? Just like social media and li literally social media is probably like the very smallest thing that we do in elevated membership. Um, in terms of the, the uh, process of, of optimization for their whole business to produce growth. So um, it, this is a long video. If you click on this video, you'll probably see, um, well, depending on this intro, I know the whole video in total, uh, when I recorded it was like 47 minutes. It was actually a lot longer. Um, so what you'll notice is a couple things. I double time the uh, audio. So I'm like talking really fast <laughs> in the video. So don't get like surprised when you hear like the speed of it being very like upbeat and up tempo. That's to for your benefit because like I was listening to it the first time I'm like fuck I don't even want to like listen. It's like 47 minutes. It's still just like I need something a little bit more of pace. So I'll shorten it down by doubling with the audio. So don't get like all oh shit about it. Um, and also too it, it, it should be long for a reason. Like these aren't things and results that you get with quick fixes. These are results that you get with, uh, you know, long-term views, long-term mental switches. Um, and this is, if you can't stay through for like whatever, a 47 minute plus video, um, honestly, you probably don't even deserve to get results because it's just, you're trying to go for short, quick fixes. And we totally switched the mindset of, get out of the quick, like the, 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 like the shiny object syndrome, get out of that shit. Right. And really, what are we totally focusing on uh, and the objective and the goal of what our business should be going towards? Um, so <laughs> that should be like part of the also the part of the training right there should be just getting through a fucking long video, too. But other than that, um, a lot of great information. Um, I'll just keep this up on here on YouTube because I know a lot of barbers will go ahead and benefit from this. Um, so I'm going to shut up and just go ahead and get right into this video. I'm um, really talking about, you know, how to get off the hamster wheel, the redundant long hours of barbering, how we even get fucking results in elevated mentorship, uh, and not just like be a talker about this shit, but actually do the shit. Um, and then as well as like, what is the process about this, right? How do we, how do, how does this even work? What, what, what needs to be done in order to get these results? Uh, and we'll kind of go over in that. Uh, there's a couple of like things we have to go over first uh, in the first part of the video before we can actually get into better content, but stay with the whole video. So with that, let's get this started. So like I said before, how to escape the hamster of barbering, accelerate growth, generate high paying clients, and really gain control over your career. Um, and this was something that I had to go ahead and go through myself. Uh, so don't worry, I have first hand experience with this. But probably the first question you're wondering is, well, 
what the hell is the hamster wheel of barbering, right? What, what, what does that even mean? Like, um, it's just a random quote that you just said. Well, hamster wheel of barbering, you know, for myself, when I began cutting hair, you know, all my focus and desires were on how to become a booked out barber. I think everybody does have that at first. Uh, you know, you want to be having clientele, but really once that is achieved, for myself, I quickly found out that it was not at all what I thought it was, right? Uh, I was making money, but at the expense of long 12 to 14 hour work days, a worn down body, my shoulder felt like it was gonna fall off halfway through the day. Uh, and really finding out that charging really anywhere from 20 to $40 per haircut really isn't what I thought it would be. You know, this perception of what I thought barbering was, I thought it was gonna be amazing, I was gonna have all these clients, I thought I was gonna be making money, I thought I was gonna love and have the freedom to do what I did, but the expenses I was paying of like zero free time day in and day out once I got to that point was, wasn't worth it at all. And really for myself, I came to the realization I wanted to create more income without all the work. But really for myself in that position, it was already too late, right? The cycle of doing the same thing day after day, week after week already had me like really by the neck. And for, so really, what did I do to escape this? Well, I did nothing for two years. And also maybe you're thinking like, hell, I'm not even booked out yet, right? Well, I'm just trying to get my days full so I can feel like I'm making progress and, and really good. You know, also, I'm also gonna cover like, really, how do you fucking avoid this shit, right? No, nobody, the worst thing you want to do is just have be like, you know what, I don't need this right now um, because I'm not even in a position to be booked out until I'll, I'll worry about that when I get there. But really for myself, and I think a lot of other barbers, you want to worry about this prior to even getting that position. You want to avoid this at all costs because this is what literally zaps all motivation to cut hair. It zaps the fun out of it. Uh, and really you don't wanna fall victim to this really old way of barbering and really step into this new era of, of what I'm about to show you. Start off with what is growth and what is not growth in the barber industry, right? Like, what is what is this thing that we call growth? What is this, what, what is it? Because I feel like everybody doesn't really, everybody wants growth, everybody wants to grow in the industry, but nobody really knows what to do. Like, is it, you know, growing on social media? Is it growing business? Is it, you know, adding more services? What is this thing called growth? And really growth, when we come down to it, is, is the amount of income that can be produced per month. You know, not the amount of heads cut, number of services provided, or followers on IG, to be quite honest. And cutting more clients is not equal more outcome or more growth at all. It, it, does, it, like, it, it does not mean that, okay, cool, just to raise, just to grow, I need to cut more heads. In fact, it means cutting less, right? And, and for us, in the new, this new era, we measure growth not by how much we make, but by how much we keep, profits over revenue. And, and lastly, executing a haircut at a high level does not equal growth. You know, I've seen plenty of barbers using this old method uh, that can fade fucking incredibly well, but... You, there's, you look at their prices or you go book with them, they're charging under $60 a haircut or, you know, like $20 a haircut. And you're like, what the hell are you doing, dude? You know, you, you, it, it's mind boggling. And it's because it's the separation. So as you can see, this is kind of like my growth graph. <laughs> and what most barbers think of this as growth is, and I'm going to use my little, um, my, my mouse right here. What most barbers think of this as growth is not this graph, right? Most barbers think we start right here at the beginning and we, it's just a, uh, it's an escalation. And it will always, always continue going. But this is never true because if that was, we would continue to grow. It would just be, okay, cut another client. It would be cut another client, make more money, cut another client, make more money, cut another client, make more money, cut another client, make more money. But we understand we, we can't, we're not a machine, right? We're humans. We need rest. We need sleep. We need time away. We're going to get annoyed. Our bodies are going to break down. And this is where we see this plateau at for everybody. Um, and it's really a plateau in business. And for everybody in the industry, this is what typically looks like. We start out here. We, maybe this is where we start out cutting hair uh, and we get into a barbershop. We've got to build up our clientele, right? So it's, it takes a little bit longer. It takes slow, it takes slow. But this compound interest over time, you know, you, all of a sudden you start seeing people like your, your clientele book out. You're getting excited. Like, fuck yeah, I'm making more money. I'm increasing. How much more can I go? But then, you know, we kind of tail off right up here. And it's really because we hit a max of how many heads we can cut, how much our body can sustain working back to back to back to back to back week in and week out. Um, and we really see a plateau around here, right? And and that hurts for growth because that means, look, we're still taking a lot of time and this is not adapt adaptation of technology. Let's say this is money, right? Income made, but we, we don't see our income rising at all. It just continues at this same level. And that's really not what growth is. It's kind of just, you know, we're staying at the same place. So what causes this plateau? Well, really a lack of business knowledge. You know, what you get, what got you to that level won't get you to the next level at all, right? Like a lot of barbers think, okay, cool. Um, if I handed out business cards, took walk-ins uh, and just did 30 minute haircuts, I, I just keep on doing more and more of that and doubling down that. And that's what's gonna get me to be able to raise prices and, and create more income. But that's that's just how you start out. That's not how you you get to the next level. That's not how you. That's not how I got to raise to be able to charge 100, 150, 200 bucks per haircut, right? Next one is is huge. And one that gets overlooked more times than not. It's personal problems that, that get thrown under the bus. And, and for me, I try to hold a key principle. People don't have business problems. They have personal problems that bleed into their business. And notice I didn't say barbers, I said people, right? At the end of the day, we're still people that just do cut hair for a living. Um, and we still have to focus on the core aspect of that. And then lastly, misdirection from quote unquote successful barbers. Uh, misdirection, misinformed barbers imitating the wrong actions. And really like you see this everywhere. You see this at hair shows. You'll, I've walked around at these hair shows and seen some of these guys who, who educate for these companies and, and, and I'm listening to what they're saying. I'm like, what the fuck are you saying? Like, why would you, why would you even tell somebody to do that? It's, it's, it's madness. It's crazy. It's crazy. It's a crazy thought of like what they spread out there saying that this is what being a successful barber is, but they, you know, they're charging 30, 40, 50, 60 bucks a haircut. I'm like, most of my students don't even charge that. Most of my students actually charge more than that. What do you mean successful? Right? And really what this creates? Well, as you can see, like 
we have we have two people right here, right? Um, so, and we have both of them want to get success, whatever they deem success is, right? And we, we all, like we already generated before, what growth is, what success is, the amount of income we can produce. Um, so let's go ahead and start with that for success. Now, we got a person on the left who is just doing multiple projects. He got like four things, multiple streams of income, quote unquote, or, you know, what they hit the barber, the plateau, and then they try to do it with a bunch of other things versus the barber who just said, okay, cool, I hit a plateau. Well, I'm going to keep my main thing, the main thing. And where do I get to go to really you know, boost this up. And it's really that focus energy in one thing that allows you to get progress. Otherwise you're doing average shit all the way around, right? It's like spending, it's like somebody who spends an hour on the lineup versus five minutes on the lineup, right? Who's, whose lineup is going to be more sharper? And don't say, well, the one with the better blades. Honestly, it's going to be the motherfucker who spent an hour on the lineup versus five minutes on the lineup because they put their most amount of energy into that lineup. Now I'm not saying do that as a service, but I'm just giving you an example of that. So you know, what this creates, you know, <laughs> so we have the multiple projects on this end, as you can see, and we have one project on here and both these individuals are folks that are obviously kind of here. So person on the left is what we're talking about. You know, they're platform artists for one, they're a real estate agent, they're Forex trader, they're sponsored by four clipper companies, but you know what? They don't get paid. They just get free stuff. They have, they have a hair product line and clothing line. They have a brand. And last but not least, they have an online course available of how to uh, put in your razor blades in your uh, straight razor. And bottom line is, you know, they charge $30 for a 30 minute haircut and really they struggle for, you know, time and growth in business. And what this really looks like on uh, on a bigger scale of both sides. So like, look, let's say the goal is char to charge $200 per haircut for both, right? So we see person on the left, again, pursuing everything and, and literally getting no progress in any direction. Person on the right, really just focusing on, that's all I'm going to work focus on, is how can I charge $200 for a simple haircut uh, uh, service? And you see, they go ahead and get that progress. And one person on the left, again, all of those things before, bottom line, they're charging $30 for a 30-minute haircut, struggles for, you know, uh, time, and, time and growth in business. And then, you know, they looked apart but really has yet to achieve a goal. You know, they look all the part. They look successful. They're doing all these things. They look like they're a grinder. They look like they're going to be having a lot of money. But when we really look at it, all these little notches, it, it, it's the amount of energy and progress they're able to make in each and stuff, every single one of these. It, well, really, like the person over here, really there's a highly focused barber. Bottom line, they achieved the goal of cutting $200 a haircut because that's the only thing they allow themselves to focus on. And really, this is a doer and, and, and not a talker. This is a doer actually doing the damn thing. Talker just says they want to have this goal, but yeah, I'm going to go, I'm going to have something that puts me in this direction, right? So white barbers never achieve growth, no matter how hard they try. Well, they never finish what they start. And this was incredible for me to, to figure out, right? Like I never finished what I started ever. When I was charging like 16, 20 bucks, I, I never, I never, I was, I was already trying to look and to see, okay, well, I've, I've already hit my plateau. So how, how can I generate more money, right? I, it must be, I, have, I must have to start a business. So I went back to school and tried to try to start, like I went back, it was community college too. I went back to school and like tried to, uh, went, went, took some business classes. Like I, that's how I'm going to earn more income. I got, I got to be able to, uh, um, you know, learn how to run business. And then I did like coaching for, coached like a high school baseball team thing. And that was going to get me income, coach like a, 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 a smaller events. But other than that, it, my main focus wasn't on the main thing. And really, you have to ask yourself this question, right? If someone doesn't execute at a high level in their current industry, which honestly is wide open and has unlimited possibilities, and they settle for average, what proof is there that the same that, that same character trait they had when they were attacking the barber industry won't follow them to the next? And really, there is zero proof. And, and this, is, this is really the biggest underlying factor. You have to be able to take this thing to the next level. What, what, what proof is there if you are only charging 40, 50 bucks per haircut saying that, okay, that's honestly, it's an average level, right? Pretty average. What, what, what proof is there that you're going to build a multi-billion dollar business in, in, let's say the real estate industry, when you've yet to understand what it takes in something very simple as the barber industry to grow your business. You can't get out of that labor type mindset. And really it comes down to this, how you do one thing is how you do everything. And, and really when I, when I, when, when I learned this, the shit changed my whole entire paradigm. It changed exactly how I approach my business. It changed, oh shit, why am I trying to run away from the problem? My problem isn't the fact that I can't make money. The problem is I can't, I, I can't put myself through uh, what it takes to uh, get to an excellent level, to get to a, a master level, to get to a level that's not average. I have to break through this mentality. And what I'm not saying is this, you know, I'm not saying be a barber for life. And for, honestly, for me, I never wanted to cut hair forever, but I knew that since I wasn't hundred percent sure on what to do next, Really, my only option was to grow my barbering business to be able to break old habits, break my current paradigm and worldview of business and create a new self-image of myself. And, and for me, the person who was charging 16 bucks to the person who was charging 150, 200 bucks for a haircut, two totally different ideas of what not only success is, but what it takes to get success as, as well as like what business actually is, what it takes to run a successful business. It's these lessons in, the, in, the, in these trials and tribulations you have to go through in order to have a successful business. And now I have the confidence I can really go into any business venture and have success because I know what it took. I don't know. I, I have a hundred percent. I'm hundred percent sure that I would not know what to do if I was still charging 16, 20 bucks, even if I was charging 50 bucks, I still wouldn't know what to do. So how can we control what success looks like? Well, we already do it unconsciously with everything around us. Right. And, and, and listen to me real quick. When you think of a pen, an idea of what you believe a pen comes up to mind, not a pencil, a book or, or a TV, like literally like a pen, whether it be blue or black ink. 
Now, when I think of, uh, now when I say, uh, think of the Joker, right? You might think of Heath Ledger, Joaquin Phoenix, Jared Leto, who was terrible, uh, or Jack Nicholson. And, and your mind draws a mental picture of what you believe to be true, each one of those items above, and, and what you perceive them to be. So some things we could say are real. For example, you know, if, if I said to you, well, the Joker of the Dark Knight is played by Heath Ledger. Well, yeah, there, there's physical evidence that backs this up. Therefore, it must be held true. But what about things we can't prove with physical evidence, right? Like, what about things that we can't say, well, yeah, I see that right there. I can physically see it. Like, what about happiness? What about success, right? So what about anger, sadness, all these emotions or just things that aren't physical, that come with physical evidence? Well, it all starts from belief of an idea that you hold as truth. And really, this is the cycle of belief, right? So we got belief, which feeds into actions. Our actions feeds into our results. Our results feed into feedback for us. And our feedback feeds back into what our belief is. Now, the problem, <laughs> there's a big problem with this. The brain wants to be correct on its beliefs, right? When the brain is correct on a belief, it releases a chemical in your body known as dopamine, which makes the body feel good and recognize it as, you know, I want more of that, right? Dopamine is the same chemical released when we have sex, drink alcohol, scroll on social media, or when drug addicts get their fix. That's why it's such a repetitive pro process, right? It's very hard to break that cycle. And the same way, and I'm not, it, it's, it's, it's the same way when we kind of get into this redundancy of thinking labor is what produces income. It's what produces success, really. We have to start at the core root. And really what this problem looks like. So right, right above right here, we have the doors to success, right? So we have a martyr, we have painful, easy, simple, hard, suffering, stressful, complicated. And really behind all these doors to success, if we walk through the one that we choose our belief of what success looks like, we believe that success is on that other side. So let's start with this, uh, the cycle of belief again, right? So belief, uh, success is hard, right? So we go to back to our doors of success and we go through all, okay it's not martyr it's not painful it's not easy oh there that one's hard i know success on the other side of the door those are the ones that they don't have success on the other side of the door right so we go back here so belief success is hard action walks through door that matches the belief result take on hard work and gets burnt out really no results the feedback is i'm on track because i know this is what success takes and my belief is success is hard yes yes success is hard <laughs> and you can see what's what's kind of messed up with this right so let's take an example from the barber industry all right let's make this make more sense so again we have we have martyr figure doesn't raise prices because wants to serve community play small in life uh to not grow where they came from painful Nose cuts are worth more, but honestly, they stay at the current prices not to mess up the shop vibe. You know, doesn't know uh, if barbering is right for them. It's just a painful process. And easy, simple. Takes action, follows proven systems, has no problem creating growth, focuses on one thing. Hard. Taking on multiple projects, multiple streams of income, always busy, but never efficient to make the boat go faster. Right? And the boat is, let's just say, your overall business and income. Uh, suffering. Waits around, too afraid to raise prices because clients will leave, hoping and praying one day they'll see growth, but has no plan. Mm -mm -mm. Stressful. Takes on more than they can handle, has side hustles to make ends meet. Mentality on Faster cuts equals growth. And we all know that when your shoulder feels like it's about to fall off and the muscle feels like it's about to rip off from the bone. And then finally, complicated. Always gives an excuse, uh, uh, would raise prices, but you know, whatever excuse comes after that. And really they move from shop to shop. Just make sure it's complicated. Ah, you know, they weren't they weren't the correct shop for me. I need to go to this one. Ah, you know, that one wasn't right either. I need to go to this one. It's just complicated shit that always falls. So the cycle of a belief, let's go ahead. Like, so belief of the barber industry. I suffer if I suffer long enough, someone will reward me with success. So let's go back to this. Okay, we're gonna find the suffering one martyr. No, the painful, no, easy, simple, no, hard, no, suffering. This is the door. I know this is it. This is going to get me success. I'm going to walk through this one, right? So I wait around too afraid to raise prices because clients will leave, hoping and praying one day they see growth but has no plan. So we have the belief. If I, if I suffer long enough, someone will reward me with success. Action. No action. No plan. Just continues to do daily tasks. You know, no, just, hey, I'm just going to do it. The result, no decrease in business, but really no growth. And this is the big hamster wheel, right? This is where... This is where this is where the hamster wheel really comes into effect. And then, you know, feedback. If I keep doing this, eventually I'll figure out what I want. And then just feeds back and bleed. If I suffer long enough, someone will reward me with success. <laughs> and really, this happens every time we make a decision. How, how scary is that? that? Every time we make a decision, we come to this understanding of like, All right, what does it look like? Well, I, if this is my perception of what success looks like, uh, this is the door I must walk through, right? This, these are the decisions I must make. But really, we want to influence this. So how can you influence this process to work with you rather than against you? Well, Here's the secret formula. Really, constant plus variable equals is outcome desired. So let's just take, for example, you, yourself, uh, and then input of idea of what success looks like is going to be our variable, right? Because that can always change. Uh, you can never change. You're always going to be there no matter what. I hate to say it. And let's say the desired outcome we want to create for ourselves is $1,500 in three days of work. Now, some of you might be like, holy shit, I don't make $1,500 in like uh, five days worth, worth of work. I don't make $1,500 in a month. Trust me, we're going to get there. Okay, we're, we're, if you just stay, trust this process. Stay with me along through this whole video. We're going to get to that. So what this problem looks like. So now we have the uh, keys to success, right? So um, below each one are keys to success. I know they're kind of cut off, but I can still read them. So the martyr, the key to success that is be as friendly as possible and throw on free events that you uh, put on with your own money for your own community around, you know, just, just around it around the barbershop to give away free haircuts to clients. Painful, you know, cut seven days a week, 365 days a year, never charges extra for, for after hour cuts or holiday cuts, right? That, that's, that's, that's the key to success. If, if, I, if I think, if on the other side of being, going through this painful experience of success, this is my key. Or easy and simple, right? Cut less, make more money. It's, pre it's pretty simple, right? We keep it simple. Hard, more cuts equals more money. So of course we're gonna try and take on more stuff. Uh, suffering, work long hours, stay at the uh, shop to make more money. 
right? That does not sound that suffering, right? You want, okay, if I've got to make more money, I've got to be able to do this. Stressful. Cut as fast as possible to make more money. It's pretty stressful. <laughs> I've been there before. Uh, complicated. If current client refers 38 uh, people and they get two free haircuts and 39% off their haircuts and those referrals get their next 23 lineups, 43% off if they book an appointment for 3 p.m. We all know those people. Let's be honest. We all know those type of barbers. They're just like, what the fuck are you doing? What do you, how do you, how, does, how do you even qualify somebody for that? So the secret formula, here we go ahead and put it. So you plus more cuts equals more pay because that's, that's what our, um, our hard, it looks like, right? Equals $1,500 three days of work. So $1,500 divided by, let's say on average, let's just say we're, we're charging $30 per haircut, right? That's 50 haircuts that we have to do. So 50 haircuts divided by three days is about 16.6 .6 haircuts per day, which, you know, you're not going to do a 0. 0.6 of a haircut. So let's just say it's 17 haircuts a day. You're going to make a little bit like 15, 30. Okay. So 17 haircuts in two days, uh, per 17 haircuts per day, divide, uh, divide by two cuts per hour. It's about 8.5 hours work. Or if you really want to do hour long services, that's 17 hours in a day, which leaves you what? Um, about seven hours for sleep or seven hours for the rest of your day. Not even sleep, right? You still have to eat. You still have to shower. You, that's not even counting anything. You haven't ate throughout the whole day. That's just like 17 hours. That, that's, that's what your life is like to be able to make 1,500 in three days. So here's what this looks like. You plus 17 haircuts per day times $30 per haircut multiplied by three days equals $1,530. So why don't most barbers ever create growth? And really simply, they never change the door and choose what, what they walk through, right? They stay choosing the same door over and over again, thinking that's going to get them success because that, it, it's that recurring effect of the belief. It just feeds back around the feedback. I know this is going to work. It's working. I know it's going to work. The brain is firing dopamine because this is what my, my whole idea of what it is. It's, 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 it's being a martyr figure. It's, it's, it's stressful. It's, it's, it's confusing. It's hard, right? I know this. This is what success is supposed to look like to me. But really, change your approach of how to achieve your success to goal. That's really the only thing you can do. So we go back here and we, we kind of look back over our you know, our, our door success. And we could say, okay, cool. If we just wipe everything clean, right? If we don't have any uh, sort of belief, we want to choose the door to walk through. Which one do we want to walk through? Well, it's pretty, I think it's, and it's pretty simple. <laughs> we go with easy, simple, right? Cut less, make more money. It's the only logical thing that would work here. So what this paradigm creates, well, your constant plus variable equals outcome is you plus cut less, make more money equals $1,500. And result, well, this is actually my result right here. Right? This is what I did in terms of changing my paradigm. Uh, and it allowed me to walk through the door and understand, okay, I need to cut less hair, make more money. If you see here, I only did about four haircuts a day. I don't think I even did five haircuts in one day, right? And everything was, right, let me see, everything was about like 120, there's uh, almost $200 charge in there. Um, and really, there's only 10 haircuts total in here. 10 haircuts totaling $1,317.16. Really, I probably did about two more, three more haircuts that just didn't, that would, you know, pay me in cash only. Um, so, you know, I probably did get to the 1500. But still, 10 haircuts versus doing, what was it, 50? 10 hours, and by the way, this is, these are hour-long services. 10 hours versus, what was it, like uh, 50 hours? I don't know about that one. Or, or, or you know, 17 hours, even in a day, right? If you're, if you're doing hour-long haircuts, 17 hours a day, my 10 hours a day in just one day would, would beat out you incredibly. Like, it just, I only have to work one day doing this method. And really changing the paradigm and view on the industry really does nothing except allow you to make a different decision. That is the most important uh, spot to start at, but it's not where we must go. Now we can get into a little bit more of the actual practical advice instead of the kind of mindset that approach that needs to happen and shift that needs to happen in the barber industry away from this old method and into this new era of barbering. Um, and now we can go ahead and, and stuff will start to make a little bit more sense for you. So really, you know, here are the three actual principles that you have to laser lock focus in on to see growth and take control of your business. And really, first and foremost, like these are only three uh, core principles that you got to focus on. First is point of optimization, you know, growth versus comfort. Second is going to be unknot your water hose or flow of your business, client attraction, client follow through, service delivery, retaining high paying clients, and high performance outputs. You know, does it make the boat go faster? You hear me? You heard me say that a lot of times. We're going to go more in depth on that. And then small input, large outputs. Now, all these we're going to go in depth on in the following. So don't just think, okay, cool, this is all I need to know. We're, I'm actually going to show you a real life example of what to do, what happens, and really what comes of that at the end. So. Every barber has the same tools to work with, right? We have time, energy, and resources. So why do we see varied results of outcomes across the industry as a whole? Well, problem one, growth versus comfort, right? When I talk to barbers, they all desire to attain growth. Whether they're just starting out and have to build up a huge platform on social media, but have yet to break through with their pricing at all, right? This leaves barbers feeling burnt out, trapped in the cycle of hamster wheel, of cutting hair, and seeing zero progress as the years go by. And even barbers who say they want to grow, when we break down their daily actions, we see that out of the 18 hours of work they did, they did only about 30 minutes went into growth actions, and the rest went into wasted time. That's not efficient at all. You're, you're wasting most of your day. And even barbers wanting growth, desiring to raise prices, reading, watching tutorial after tutorial, they still stay stagnant, right? Why does this happen? Well, put it simply, we are the total sum of our daily actions. 
And really to hack this, you know, we got to focus on what our point of optimization is. And for us, every decision we make needs to be optimized towards our point of optimization. It allows us to, when we get off track, to get back on to doing the tasks that allows us to create forward progress and growth. And this point of optimization should be long-term thinking, not short-term, right? So my example of a point of optimization was to charge $150, $200 for a simple haircut service, right? Not just, okay, I just want to raise my prices about five, 10 bucks. Five, 10 bucks is a tip. That's not a price raise, right? And, and really here, here's what you should need to practice. Really uh, define the goal create clarity, track daily actions, get clarity on the result of the, of the action. And beside each, label them if they're optimizing for progress towards your goal or not. And if you say, stay in the same place, you get to cut that out. If you regress, you get to cut that action out, right? And this is what this looks like, right? So again, like when we don't have a point of optimization, we, we look we look like the left, right? We take on multiple projects, we're, we're not optimized, you know, we're, we're thinking this is optimized, but really less is more in this situation. The less that we take on, the less that we do, the less that we focus on, the, 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 if we just focus on the main thing, the core aspect of it, we actually get to success, right? And really points, you know, this way it looks like points optimized for the same goal, right? So we got both these barbers who want to charge $200 per haircut, right? And, this, and really like we have the amount of energy that is put into each, each of these uh, uh, focus opinions, right? So, right, like, so the barber on the left, he's focusing most of his energy on posting and scrolling on, on Instagram, right? And it's just comfort. It's not growth. That's just staying where you're at right? Going on, uh, going out for drinks, again, comfort, charging $200 per haircut. There's our growth, right? That's, that's what we want to focus on. And, and, and lastly, hanging out with friends again, just comfort. That's where your energy is going, right? And we have to cut out all of this and just simply focus on charging $200 per haircut. Whereas the barber on the right, simply that's all he puts his energy into falls asleep, wakes up. That's all they're thinking about, right? The, every, every action is going to optimize for what is going to be able to allow me to charge $200, $200 per haircut. They don't have another project going on. Once they leave the shop, they don't have anything, you know, in their free time. This is all their life purpose is going towards. And this is how you, this is how you gain uh, uh, momentum. This is how you achieve growth is just literally focus, hone in on one thing, cut out the rest of the bullshit and get to work and iterating what is going to get you there. Go through, walk through those different doors, change up your variables. So again, solution, right? Identify your overall goal. You know, what you should do is track every action you take on every hour on the hour for a seven day period, really like social media, scrolling, naps, drinking reading, watching Netflix, et cetera, whatever you do, right? And, and next to every action, identify if the result is the best option for optimizing your time during that moment to get closer and closer to your overall goal. Or was there a better input? Basically, was there a better action to do? If the input got you the best return, right? Like if it got you closer and was optimized to be able to charge, let's say $200 a haircut, awesome, double down on that thing, right? That, that's it, like keep, that's, that's something you should continue going and doing on and spending more time on. But if it didn't get you closer to your goal, cut that shit out. It, 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 and if there is a better way to optimize that action, jot down three different ways, test out this action over the next week uh, period to see the results. And then really lastly, repeat until you're only left with the best optimized actions, right? So here's an example, right? Uh, for those of you that know, uh, one of my one of my students, uh, King Cardell Josias, um, you know, when, when we started working together, he came to me, this kid was like, I mean, he's young too, right? He was overworked, highly underpaid, run down with long hours, dissatisfied with working at the shop and really all over the place with his actions and daily habits, even his social media. He didn't really know what he was doing. Right. And, and I had to ask him like, dude, like, like, why are you doing all this stuff? Why are you cutting like all these after hour haircuts? Why are you doing all this like nonsense? Like, what, what do you want? He's like, well, I, I want to be able to raise my prices, to be able to charge hundred bucks. I want to be able to build my profile and I want to be able to build my platform up to be able to educate in this industry. I'm like, okay, cool. Well, look at what you're doing, right? You're, you're going to these festivals. You're, you're getting high all the time, right? You're doing all these things. You're hanging out with friends that, that do these things like, you know, support you after you get out of the shop in getting to that goal. I'm like, no, okay, cut that shit out. And we cut all that shit and we put input processes that would allow him to grow. And you know, now he's looking to raise his prices up to 70 bucks. He's already raised his prices, but now he's honing in on a $70 price point. By the time you're watching this video, he probably already is at 70, if not above that. Uh, you know, right now he works out of his own studio. So he's able to leave the barbershop he was working at and really go off on his own. And really overall, he's focused on growth and the actions needed to promote that daily. He's not just bullshitting or kind of like just doing his work at the shop and going home and relaxing. Like everything he is doing, every part of his day from the second he wakes up to the moment he goes to sleep is going into his growth. And that's why you see the results. So problem two, uh, system to scale. You know, you can do the optimization, but really the next obstacle barbers have is how, how to create growth with the service delivery flow, right? This is like, this is like a beast to, to uh, really control. And I'm going to show you where those drop off points are, right? Especially if you're on social media, uh, have, have, it doesn't matter if you have 20 followers, a hundred thousand plus followers. This is always going to affect you if you're charging anything under 80 bucks, willing to bet. And really there's only four parts of this process, which make up the flow of your business. Really just client attraction, client conversion, service delivery, and results in cash. So the not in your water hose of your business. Now, we, like I said before, we have client traction, client conversion service, delivering results in money. And at the beginning, we have the flow of clients. So uh, when we when we're get this thing flowing, right? It, the, the, let's say a full flow is, is ha being able to charge, you know, let's say 150, 200 bucks. That's, that's a full flow, right? But a typical system of operation really deteriorates from that, right? So we have, you know, uh, one system, which is wa take walk-ins, give them haircut, give info to book appointment, and then get them returning client. Another one is referral, appointment setup, or walk-in, um, service delivery, and then they're a returning client. 
Next would be handout business cards in person, uh, marketing, appointment setup, walk-in, service delivery, and returning client. And last but not least, of course, the social media, appointment setup, service delivery, and returning client. And by the way, I'm not gonna like say, hey, social media is the one. All, each and every single one of these has a has a knot in, in the flow. Even social media has a knot in the flow, uh, and we're gonna go over that right now. So really, the knot in the water hose of business growth with the walk-in to haircut to give uh, info to book an appointment to returning client. Really, that's in your client attraction, right? You can't, <laughs> I mean, like you're basically like a, a slave to, to the barbershop or, or wherever you're at, to hopefully get clients, right? Your client attraction method is all the way off. And this affects down the line, right? You can only charge so much to a walk-in. You can only go ahead and do so many haircuts at, if there's that many walk-ins. Um, and people who really um, just focus on, okay, I'm just gonna take walk-ins, build my business. Well, you're gonna try and look to go to a pop-in barbershop and just try to feed off that current clientele. But at a certain point, that's also gonna fail. So you're almost like screwing yourself over. Now, the second thing is, is referral of appointments uh, set up, you know, in service delivery with a returning client or hand out business cards in person, marketing, um, appointment set up slash walk-in service uh, or slash walk-in, then do the service delivery and then returning client. And really what we see with this is, is in the client conversion right so we can go ahead and you know referrals and appointment setups if with walk or you know take appointments or hand out business cards you know we can do a lot of that but at the end of the day how many of those people are going to come to us and, and, and you're spreading your time so thin over that that time margin right why are you instead of cutting hair being in the shop handing out business cards and really like these are the only two methods that barbers really think okay it's either i'm going to do walk-ins or i'm going to take my time i'm going to wait in the shop and and wait for walk-ins to come to me or i'm going to go out and be proactive i'm going to hand out business cards i'm going to shake hands and get people in but really like your time i mean how many people can you talk to in an hour right? Even if you talk to 500 people, like you're, you're going to get blown out of the water by, by somebody who's on social media uh, who can present their work, by the way, not just themselves, but their actual work to over 100,000 people, to over 100,000 people per post, right? You're just going to get blown out of the water. It's, it's, it's a good way to start up your business, but you know, at a certain point when you want to raise prices, I mean, how many times can you go out and walk and hand, hand out your business card and shake hands telling people, Hey, I charge a hundred dollars per service. Please come get a haircut by me. I've, t I've even tried that before, right? Just to see what would happen. People were like, what the fuck are you talking about? Dude, get out of my face. You got me fucked up thinking I'm going to pay you that. It, it just, it's it very inefficient. It doesn't work. And if you want to try it, by all means, try go out, like ask people, Hey, like if you do already hand out business cards, go up to people and say, Oh man, you know, you should come get a haircut by me. You know, I charge 200 bucks a haircut. I'll get you right. See what the reaction is, right? <laughs> Probably not going to be a good one. And finally, like the social media, you know, the, uh, if they're if they're on social media, appointment setup, service delivery, returning clients, uh, really the biggest the biggest not in the water hose of their business growth is going to be in their service delivery. At some point in time, look, this allows us to build up our business, but then what I see a lot of times is they don't advance their service delivery, right? They start adding more services on instead of instead of providing less services. So their time frame of being able to service more and more clients actually dwindles down. And what, really, what they do this also affects like once they can't go into service delivery. It also affects the result in, in overall income, right? Because if your service delivery is shitty, well, you know, you're spending more time, you know, in adding all these extra bullshit services on uh, and be able to say, quote unquote, you charge a hundred bucks. End of the day, you just have a $30 haircut price with $70 worth of add-ons that honestly the client doesn't even want versus actually understanding what it's going to take to get you to be able to charge just a hundred dollars per service for just a simple haircut and simply that, right? And it's, it's not going to take you at long, that long at all. So again, we come back to this graph. What happens at every knot, right? Again, we plateau at, at eventually, right? We start off slow. We might see some growth, and then we're going to plateau. But what barbers always think is like, "Oh, I'm going to be able to get back to this. This this is attainable. I just got to, you know, I just got to keep doing what I'm doing right here, and this is going to happen." But that's that's not what happens. So what's the solution? We got to start at the first part of the model. Really identify where and what the knots is in your business, and ask the question. Well, if I was relying on this style of operation to raise my prices to, let's say, X amount, right? Let's say just for hundred dollars, would I be confident to have a business flowing at my full capacity? If yes, then move on to the next section because obviously, if, if you're able to go ahead and take in clients, let's say walk-ins wise, well, okay, that's not that's not the that's not the knot in the business. Let's go ahead and move on to the next one. Maybe it's service delivery, right? Maybe it's maybe it's affecting your overall money. You know, if no, ask what needs to, you know ask yourself what needs to change to unknot this part of your business to have that full capacity of flow. And really, here's an example. And most of you know my boy South Bay Chris. Uh, he was a student of mine, really one of my first students uh, that I really was mentoring. Uh, and he had, had knots all over service delivery and and resulting in, in very low cash flow. And really, he reached a maximum point uh, and was working till like sometimes I remember you tell me he was working till midnight at times just to make extra money. I mean, he 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 didn't work in a barber shop and didn't have a barber license. He was he was in barber school. He cut out of his parents' garage. So he just like you know I'm just, I, I don't mind. I'm just gonna do this. You know I gotta pay anything. But what he didn't know was he was just in the hamster wheel of barber already. He didn't even have his barber license. He didn't even be. He wasn't even in a barber shop. And yet he was already he was already caught in this hamster wheel of, of the industry. And really, also he had poor social media usage to generate new clients. You know, he his haircuts were good, he his, his service delivery was trash, and, and, and his resulting in income was trash. Um, and you know, what he was posting on social media really wasn't the best as well as well either. So really with him, you know, the stopgap was in service delivery and his resulting in money. I said, okay, Chris, like what, what are we gonna do, bro? Like, like it's it's not it's not that you have clientele, right? And you have retaining clientele and people who want to come to you, you're just out of time, right? Well, what are you doing service-wise? And you know, he was offering a bunch of different random shit. He was offering, you know, 30 different black mass that took like a couple extra hours and shit like that and it just, it just wasn't efficient right so all right just focus on the basics right we're gonna fo simply focus on your haircuts we're gonna simply focus on the type of haircut that you want to execute on and that's it 
And really for him, we got a free flowing simple services. And right now, currently he charges a hundred bucks, right? You know, and for him, he only has to cut five heads per day to put focus on, you know, his next business venture. You know, this dude is already on to, this is the goal, right? We want to be able to build up our business get out of the hamster wheel to be able to build a business that will take us out of even cutting hair full time. This is like the model. Um, and really he still doesn't even work in a barbershop. He still works at his parents' garage. Uh, and, and he didn't go off anywhere into the little studio. He does this all out, out, out of his parents' garage and he still just does all this out of his parents' garage. And for him, he's free to take vacation spend time with family or really focus on his next business, really five hours of work per day, making what 500 bucks. If just without tips, I mean, the dude's killing. It. He's only 20 years old. And really he has a mastery skill of social media. We understand what his point of optimization is with that, with the growth. We understand we un kinked the knot and we unknotted the, the the flow of his business to really ensure that he can take on the growth and this is what you see as a product of it and you've seen him continue to climb and you know again by the time you're probably watching this probably far and away of what he's already doing of charging 100 bucks so lastly uh problem number three is inefficiency of outputs right so social media posts plus basic knowledge of content equals new clients while charging 30 bucks this is kind of like the overall understanding of this right if i post on social media uh and and i have my basic social media knowledge i know how to get attention how i know what covers the post you know i'm gonna get again get a new client while i'm charging 30 bucks but the problem is you know barbers who do this they never grow beyond that initial point right and their outputs are there and really their outputs aren't going towards growth and really they are stuck in only servicing first order consequences which is a post on social media to get booked out at current price point and you know they'll continue to continually taking walk-ins uh, or overworking just to make more money. And really, this is the this is the epitome of an, of, of a talker versus a doer, right? These people love to talk about, oh, I'm doing this, I'm getting all these clients, I'm making all this money. Look at me on social media, but they're not a doer. You look at you know what they're making each and every single day, and it's like we kind of make the same do. You just kind of like want to do all this extra shit for you know bullshit reasons. So this is what inefficient outputs example looks like, right? This is a doer, right? You have a small input and a large output. So a small action creates a big uh, reaction, right? Versus a talker, they have they do everything, a big input but a very small output. So we got efficient outputs example. So services, right? So a doer, very basic very basic services that only take one hour and are easy to execute uh, slash little to no effort, right? And the output of that is charging 150 pl bucks plus per haircut, has peace of mind and ease inside of business and not it really isn't is not run down on time, right? The, the body, and really is not run down, right? They're not breaking down. They're not, uh, the shoulders and feel like it's about to fall off. Really barbering becomes really gamified when i got to this position in my business i was like holy fuck this is like is this really like is, is this illegal because like i don't know if, like if this is supposed to be that easy and versus a talker right very lengthy and overdone services that take a large amount of time and energy is for their inputs their outputs you know charging under 80 bucks and taking up uh, way too much and taking up way too much time and energy uh to service their clients right that's a talker it's just inefficient why would you take up more time and get paid less it's just yeah i don't know but this is like this is like the, the norm in the industry right now and then, you know, daily results, right? So like, let's say another example, Chris, right? Five hours of cutting hair with input, you know, 500 plus dollars per made per day. You know, that's a doer. That's somebody who's actually doing what they say they do. They, they are highly efficient, high-performing barber versus a talker, right? 17 hours of cutting hair. Uh, that's a large input versus their output is, you know, well, it's the same. It's $500 made per day. It's, it's not really adding up, right? That's a talker. I mean, I, you know, I made 500 a day. Well, okay. Well, how long did you work in the shop? I work 17 hours, bro. And like, you know, you hear barbers be like, I work, I work like 17 hours. It is 16 hour shifts Friday, Saturday, bro. I'm in the shop all day. Where you at? I'm like, I didn't know this is like who got a bigger, uh, you know, what uh, type of type of competition, but I only worked five hours out of the day and got the same result. So, you know, and then, you know, profit loss, you know, it, it, the efficient outputs example for profit and loss. Like, let's say like a barber's making 8,000 in revenue per month, right? So a doer, you know, track expenses, cuts out inefficient spending, knows how it knows and controls cash flows, right? And, you know, their outputs is, you know, profits, you know, profit slash keeps 5,000 after monthly expenses. You know, they don't do too much. They, they only like, they, maybe they might go out to eat, you know, treat themselves, they're on a low budget. They don't try to flex with any designer shit. They're not trying to buy new cars. They're not trying to buy chains. And they're not trying to like, be, look, they're not trying to do, look the part. They're just trying to do the part, right? Versus a talker, right? Keeps track of tra cash flow in, in uh, the notes uh, or on paper on their iPhone, right? Uh, and really they profit slash keep 500 to $1,000 per month after monthly expenses. And trust me, I know this is hitting the court for some of y'all. You're like, oh, don't call me out. Don't call me out, Deluxe. Trust me. <laughs> I've even had to work with barbers who do are the talkers. Like, yeah, man, I make $8,000 per month. In I'm making $8,000, you know, per month. Things boom. And I'm in the shop, you know, 17 hours out a day, every day. I'm in here. We doing the thing, but I don't need no help. I'm like, really? Uh, well, what, what are your profit margins? How much are you keeping after every month? What, what do you, and they're like, well, what do you mean? Like, well, you subtract everything, you know, that you, that expense wise. And how much are you left with? How much are you profiting? And it gets real quiet after that. Because they know exactly that that is where money's bleeding out. They're going to the club. They're buying all these uh, booths and everything. They're spending, wasting money on bullshit rather than really having an ex exact idea of how to grow and what the next step is for them to create a business, not only right here, but to get themselves out of cutting in the barber industry, right? Oh, this is my favorite one too right here. Efficient outputs example of social media. So the doer really spends little to no effort on social media posts due to mastery level, minimal posts, main focus on making business bigger, right? And that's their input. And their output is working less while making more money, charging $150 per haircut, and constantly growing. 
I mean, it's, it's simple. That's what doer does. They're not really too caught up with it. This is what they do. Versus a talker, constantly posting, putting all time and energy into trying to make social media bigger and bigger, right? They're spending all the time and, and work, putting energy into that. Really, and, and really what they're doing is they're working more while trying to really maintain the level of income for the image of what they're portraying, living month to month in a state of plateaued growth. Really, these talkers, they don't, they don't get growth. They don't get progress in their business. And really, what's the solution? Well, track process of your outputs, right? Service delivery, daily results, profit loss, social media. And really, if you're maxed out and can't grow past that point of where you are, start stripping away the unnecessary bullshit and the junk to get the core value and be able to efficiently produce results. So really, the goal is more growth produces more growth, which produces more growth, not more work. You know, we got to go, we not, you know, we got to do more with less, you know, and really positive feedback loops. You know, the more you do, does this service or thing get better or worse, right? If, if it becomes worse, your system of operations are broken, right? The more that you, that you, uh, the more that you cut hair throughout the day, the more appointments that you take on, does your service like continue to rise up? Does your service quality rise up or does it go down? For me, I remember when I was doing like three haircuts a day, making, you know, easily making like a six to $700 in, in a day, just off those three haircuts. And I was locked in. I didn't have to worry about a long, hour, long 17 hour day. I had my last haircut, I'm barely getting through. Three hours, I'm out. And really, here's a great example of this. My boy, David, David Escamilla. And I, I don't need to put his name because obviously his name is David. <laughs> so really with David, when, he, when we first started working together, uh, he, you know, working, he, had, he was working with big inputs, you know, and very, very low outputs. He was underpaid with no free time to generate more. He had a large platform already. already. You know, he, he already had a platform generated about 13,000 followers. But when we started working together, he was plateaued. He didn't know where to go. He was, you know, he needed to generate more income for family, but really he had too much effort on things that didn't create progress. He was, you know, he was mentoring other barbers. He was, he was working with barbers. He would have them come over his house and he was like teaching how to cut hair. Uh, he was trying to cut cut hair, you know, out of his house as well too. Uh, as well, he, he was like working out all the time. He was like, I'm, I'm gonna get big. I'm gonna work out and do all this great stuff. Uh, but you know, I, when he came to me, I, I'm like, okay, hold on, time out, bro. <laughs> what what are we trying to do? Like like, do you see how much work are you doing? Like you're gonna run yourself into the ground trying to do all this shit, right? And it was like, how much are you charging? I believe it was like thirty or forty bucks at the time. I'm like, dude, what what are you doing? Like you're you're running yourself into the ground. None of these things allow you to to get to get better. What? Why are you working out? Why are you spending so much time like um you know dieting and like killing yourself over what to eat and bland diet? Like what are you, what are you doing that for? You know, I want to get bigger. I'm like, well, do you want to become a bodybuilder? He's like, no, no. I'm like, well, what do you want to do? He's like, well, I, I want I want to be able to charge more. I want to be able to you know grow. I want to get out this plateau state. I'm like, well, does your actions of what you're doing trying to become a bodybuilder, trying to grow your muscles, uh, allow you to grow your business? And he's like, oh shit, no. And then barbers do this all the time. It's not, it, I love David. This dude, this dude is my blood. When he sees me uh, or when he sees this video, he's probably like, bro, wait, you gotta call me out like that. But <laughs> it's true. I mean, I love this dude to death. He's a, he's a grinder. He's a, he's, a, he's a hard worker at heart. But this is what most of the barbers do, right? This is what most of the industry thinks is true. You gotta be, you, you gotta, you know, I'm, I'm, a, I'm already cutting hair. I'm booked out. So I'm gonna go to the gym for like seven hours out of the day. I'm a diet. I'm an intermittent fast. I'm a, you know, I mentor barbers how to cut hair and stuff like that. And I'm gonna go ahead and, um, you know, still try to build up, you know, on, on social media. And, but th there was little to, to really show for that. Honestly, I mean, I hate to say this about David, but he was more of a talker than a doer. Now he's a more of a doer than a talker. This dude is locked in. He has small inputs with big outputs, right? He's grown his Instagram far and beyond what he has. I mean, his Instagram right now is, is like at, at 30, 40,000 followers. His YouTube is starting to, is starting to explode. Um, and all these guys too, King, King Cardell, Josias, I, mean, I believe he's at like 30,000 followers. Uh, uh, South Bay Chris, I believe he's at like 130,000 followers. Um, but for David, you know, he cut the dead weight of inefficient inputs. Right, he, look, we said, look, dude, if you're gonna work out, stop, stop trying to get big. Stop trying to be like you're gonna be a, a bodybuilder. Focus on your career. Right, it, it, that's taking way too much energy. You, you tire yourself out. By the time you get to even cutting hair, you, 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 you're already tired. Like you don't even want to cut hair. You're kind of going on autopilot. Right. And for, you know, once we kind of cleared this stuff up, you know, he just skyrocketed on growth on media platforms and his clientele too, and his business in, in general. And really, he's generating uh, the return for his work he puts in. He's no longer being a talker; he's actually being a doer. He's affecting his business directly. He has more fun, more passion, and he, he got out of this hamster wheel of like trying to look the part and just is the part. He doesn't even have to worry about it anymore. And really, what happens when all three of these occur? Well. You know, we evolved to the long-term growth once all three are optimized. And you remember what, what we kind of did with the growth chart, right? Of how we plateaued. Well, each and every single time, we, we want to go ahead and start creating growth and that creates another upspurt, that creates another upspurt. And this is why you see what got you to the last thing will not allow you to get to the next thing, right? This is a whole new understanding. But in reality, this is what the graph looks more like, right? So we have time and money. So even though people think that the graph looks something similar to, you know, what this does of like, okay, if I just continue going this way, but, you know, if we work more and make, or if we work, if we work less and make more, this is actually what it is. You know, we start at zero. We start working, working, working a couple hours, you know, four hour shifts, 10 hour shifts. Our money is cool right here. But then we kind of start scaling back. We start working less, less and less time. We start making more and more and more money. Then this is the, really the new era of the, uh, the barbering model right here. It's not this graph that has uh, growth compounded over time. It's, it's this sideways U shape that allows us to really cut down our hours and be able to ma maximize the amount of money we make. And really, this is due to staying the course and keeping the main thing the main thing. Really, you got to stay committed to the breakthrough results and not settle just for average and move to the next task. You have to be able to have a, a, a dog type mentality. You have to be, you have to stay committed. You have to want this shit, right? 
changing your worldview and beliefs of how to achieve success and understand that it is possible and that it is something that it doesn't require you to sacrifice your left arm for is the first beginning, right? Next, you got to really hone in that one point of optimization. What is everything I'm doing each and every single second of my day going towards? Next, ensure your system of flow is clear of the knots because if there's one thing that's not it, the whole, the whole system breaks. And finally, create efficient outputs that allow you to grow and actually be a doer, not a talker. Now, when you achieve this type of dominance, it's like being handed the controls to your business. You actually push a button, you know exactly what's going to come on the other side. It, 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 it becomes gamified. It's like a, it's a game that you become so good at that it's like it's, it's a cheat code, honestly. And the difference of understanding is night and day. You know, my understanding of what business was for when I was charging 16 bucks versus 150 bucks, like I said before, it was night and day. I, I'm, I would have much rather waited that time and gone through all those trials and tribulations to then start a business outside of and get outside of barbering at that point than what I was at 16 bucks. At 16 bucks, my, my whole worldview, my paradigm was, oh, I, gotta, I, I, I have to be the martyr figure, right? And if I took that same understanding into my next business venture, right, how we do one thing is how we do everything, I would have been fucked. <laughs> there would have been no business. I, I, I probably would have been broke by then. And, and also making $200 a day versus making $200 per haircut gives you lessons that are pivotal, not just in your income, but also in your future business's decisions. And honestly, right now you're coming up on a very important decision. And honestly, if recent times hasn't taught us anything, it's that waiting around to do something later is just an excuse to not take action. Really, the time is now to take action. I, I've given you everything that you need to know. I've given you a, a great action steps to go ahead and take. And really, the one who gets ahead in the industry is the one that takes action today, not tomorrow, not next week. It's, it's the one who is the doer, not the talker. And when I made my decision in my business to start taking action, I asked myself three questions, right? One, what do I want? AKA, what is my point my op optimization? Really, what do I want? Do I, do I want to stay where I'm at? Am I happy or satisfied with that? Or do I actually want to have growth? Do I actually want to see where this will get me? Do I actually know what I'm going to do outside the barber industry? Or should I, you know, is what I want is actually create growth to take this to the top fucking level I can, be great at this shit, and then whatever I, that comes in the opportunities that comes after that, hey, great, I'm going to go ahead and do that. Number two, what is truth, right? What is my current situation? I have to be brutally honest with myself. What are the real problems that I know and can count on as truths that aren't watered down but the cold, hard truth? For myself, I, I had no fucking clue what it was to run a business. I had no idea what my worldview was except that I, I wanted to go into a business sense, but I had no clue what it was. And, and to be quite honest with you, I, 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 had to be, I had to be brutally I had to be really upfront with myself. I looked myself in the mirror and said, dude, if you go into something right now, you're probably going to fail because you don't know what to do. So you don't know what it takes to get to that level of excellence. So why are you trying to run from an industry instead of actually facing the actual problem head on and bulldoze through this thing and actually get the lessons out of this to take that on to the next to your next journey? And, and finally, three, what am I going to do about it? Right. And really, we've already gone over how to find what you ultimately want. Right. We did that with point optimization. We also went over how to accurately and truthfully look at your business and see what your trajectory is. Right. We looked at your flows. We said, all right, honestly, where is the thing knotted up at and where can you go from that? Now, the question really is, what are you going to do about this? Right. Are you just going to sit back, think to yourself, wow, <laughs> Great fucking video. I've never seen something like this in the barber industry before. And really go back to watching another YouTube tutorial showing you the same fading techniques you've been studying for the last three months. Or are you going to finally start taking action and action and executing on what will get you closer to the result you're after? Not just, to, not just subscribe to another YouTube channel and be like, oh, I love this dude. I can't wait to see him at another barber show, right? Because your future is solely dependent on the decision you make today. We, like I said before, we are all the sum of our past choices. Where we are right now in life is no mistake. We are here from all our past decisions and actions we have taken. And right now I'm going to give you a pivotal choice to make. You know, are you just going to like this video? Think, wow. What a different approach. This is incredible. I, I learned so much. My brain is firing up so much dopamine. I feel good. And then just go back to being stuck on the hamster wheel. Or are you going to be like, damn it, this is a good freaking video. And fuck, I'm going to actually do something about this shit. I'm not just going to watch it like the rest of the videos I watch. I'm actually going to fucking implement this thing, right? This actually makes perfect sense. This is what I've been waiting for. Well, if you want to do nothing and go back to just being a talker about what you quote unquote do, well, really be my guest. And really, I can't tell you what the barber on the block from you will do when, you know, they take all of this information, decides to actually take action instead of what of your just bullshit and then implement it. And really, they start seeing incredible growth quickly. Well, you're still stuck doing the same thing you've been doing year in and year out. But if you are a person that actually wants to take this, apply it and learn it, then really, I got some good news for you. Right now, I've opened up a few spots for my new program I created called Elevated Mentorship, where you'll be able to work with me directly week in and week out, apply everything I've learned. And what I've provided in this video is really just scratching the surface, how to apply it towards growth and your, and your life and your business, social media, and overall profit margins to get actual tangible results. And you know, not just bullshit of like, oh, well, you part the hair here and you're going to, no, we're, we're about results. And honestly, we will work together personally. You'll be able to go through my course and get all my tools, systems, and it really just the things I've built over my journey so far that will expedite your journey to your destination much faster, a lot more predictable, and with a lot less pain and stress and suffering. This is basically a map to get you where you want to go fast. And really, the time to have a map is before you set out to sea, right? You don't want to go out on this maiden voyage without a map, but right now, you're already in the middle of the ocean. This is your chance to get a hold of that map that you've been missing. Now, if you want to get into this Elevated Mentorship program and work with me directly, have a live Q&A calls along with access to the course, the tools, you'll get access to our Facebook community and be able to meet other barbers in the program as well, as well as the success stories, then really, here's what you need to do. So basically, beneath the screen, a button's going to pop up. Go ahead and click that button, and you'll be taken to a page where you can just answer a few questions. Now, 
I'm not just going to work with anybody in this elevator membership program, to be quite honest. This is really only for people who are doers, not talkers. I, I don't like wasting my time. And, and this is a program where you will be pushed and you will be stretched to the next level. And if you're more about looking the part than actually getting results, this isn't for you, buddy. I, I don't want to work with you at all. If you're more somebody who is, ah, I just want to look the part, bro. I just want to have this big social media. That's not what we're into, right? And because talkers just want to, the clout and the image that comes with the media side of things and not worry about building a real business, right? They come, to, they come into programs, they just put out subpar work and make the rest of the group look bad. And I, I, and I try to hold up the integrity of the group, right? I try to ensure that I only bring in A plus players, right? I only want A players, not B plus, not C minus, A plus players. The last thing I want to do is give talkers these tools so they can make the industry look like a joke with it. Because honestly, these tools in the wrong hands would do some serious damage and they would make our industry look like a freaking joke. And I only want top level minded players. Those that are only interested in quality work and quality services, people who love what they do and, and want to add value and grow. I also want to make sure that you're somebody who is actually invested in getting better, right? I want to make sure you're someone who's invested in growing and not really just someone who likes the sound of it. Right, but you're somebody who's committed to your goals and, and not the person who honestly I, I would have to hold hands with, right? I don't want to be holding your hand through the whole process because I'm not looking to be a babysitter, right? And I also want to make sure that you have what it takes because let's face it, most people will look at this info in the video and be like, wow, this makes so much sense. Wow, this makes so much sense. And then you know, go go scroll aimlessly on TikTok or Netflix and go smoke a blunt and and or something and continue to live an average and, and continue to live average in this industry, right? They'll continue to go ahead and be like, oh, COVID, yeah, that, that was created by bats. Oh yeah, no, 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 that was that was created because it is such and such. It, it's bullshit. They just want to go to that life. Like, I don't want to work with those type of people. And honestly, there is a difference in people. Some people have what it takes and some don't. The ones that don't, they don't have that grit. They don't have that killer dog mentality. They don't have the killer instinct to lock in and execute when given the results. They don't have that Mamba mentality, right? And honestly, that's just the, that's, that's just the cold hard truth. And, th and that's why when you click the link below, I'm going to have you answer a few questions. And if you're going to work with me, I'm going to make sure you got those damn things. You know, I'm going to make sure you're a doer. I'm make sure you people who want to add value and grow. And I want to make sure you have what it takes. Make sure you want to have that killer mentality. I want to work with somebody that I have to babysit and hold and coddle all the way through. It's not what I'm here to do. And if you are one of those things, then you know what? That's great. You'll be able to schedule a call with me personally. And I will tell you all about Elevate Mentorship and you know, we'll get you set up and get you into it and get you where you want to go fast. Now, however, if you don't have those things, if those things aren't true, then we won't be having a call and we won't be working together. And, and I apologize in advance, but I'd rather just be honestly straightforward. And as a disclaimer, just because you send an application does not guarantee a call with me. Uh, a lot of people will not be getting in this program just simply because they will not meet the standards that I uphold for the rest of the community that we, we are building. And that is simply because I only want to work with people that I mentioned earlier because I have zero interest in this life and in this world helping shitty people do shitty things, getting mediocre results just because they want clout. And, and these tools are powerful and I really only want them going to responsible hands. I want to handpick exactly who is going to be responsible taking these into our industry and into their business and creating incredible results. So if you got what it takes, if you meet the de description of what I just talked about, then click the button beneath the video right now. Click it, go to the page, answer those questions. If you get approved, you'll be able to schedule a call with myself. We'll get on the phone. If it's a fit, we'll do it. If not, no worries. With that, I look forward to speaking with you soon. Click the button below and let's get this done.